Hey everyone, Shannon Van Fleet here, and welcome to my very first salon vlog. This video series is going to be pretty casual. I don't want to make it a big production. I simply just want to take you along to work with me, share with you some salon reality, color transformations, and yeah, that's basically it. You can make this small town girls day by hitting that subscribe button. Also, I need to know, are you guys hairstylists? If you are, comment down below, leave your Instagram name and what color line you use. All right, let's get on with it. So here's Caitlin's before shot. You can see her natural color coming through and an old balayage from several months ago. We've colored over it a couple times, but it just keeps fading out to this color. And she doesn't really like what it's fading to. So our overall goal for today is to go darker but thinking forward to how she's going to fade out, since she doesn't like what she fades to, I'm actually going to lighten her so when she does fade, she fades to a different color. Because right now she's feeling like she always fades to this kind of brassy blonde color. So the only way to kind of get past that brassy color is to just lighten through it. So I am going to base her. Um, here I'm using Redken Color Fusion in the shade 4N with 10 volume. Um, it is a permanent color and it processes for 35 to 45 minutes. She only has a few grays which is why we are covering up her natural color. We were letting it grow out for a while just for lower maintenance but she can't deal with the grays anymore so we're done with that plan and we're gonna cover it up. You could also use um, Shade DQ Cream Cover Plus, which is great for those few, those first few gray hairs as well. However, Cover Plus only processes for 20 minutes and I needed something that processed a bit longer since I'm going to be going through and highlighting and doing some other steps while this base color processes. So I'm just going through like a regular root retouch, diagonal sections, thin partings to make sure I get full saturation. And I'm dragging it down, kind of feathering it into what she already has. Since there's no real line of demarcation, I don't have to worry about overlapping and creating a band. So I'm just kind of creating my own root fade, root shade, root shadow, whatever you want to call it. And so once I have all that on, I just, I make sure I get the hairline really good and um, then I'm going to move on to highlighting. So I'm taking diagonal forward sections. Her haircut is cut in a diagonal forward as well, so I want to reflect that in the color. It would look kind of funny if I did horizontal or diagonal back sections when her haircut is diagonal forward. I don't know if you can kind of envision that at all, but it would look a little funny. So I want to make sure that the color reflects the cut. And here I'm just doing kind of a faux balayage. So I'm heavily saturating the ends and tapering it, feathering it, fading it up, whatever you want to call it, um, towards the base color. And I'm going to use her existing color as our blending color. So my lightener and my base color aren't actually ever touching. I'm using her existing color as that transition point. The lightener of choice is Blonde Icing with 30 volume and pH bonder. I mix it in a 1 to 2 ratio and I'm taking about half inch sections and I'm not leaving a buffer in between each section. It's just going to be weave after weave after weave, but it is a faux balayage weave so it's very um, organic, it's very not necessarily random but it's not going to pack a punch as if you were doing like baby lights weave after weave after weave with no hair in between. Um, since these are larger sections, it's, it's still going to look very um, blended and natural. If you have ever used Redken Blonde Icing before, you will know that the actual lightener itself is a very thick, almost paste consistency. And so when you mix it with the developer, it tends to almost not mix very well. The lightener tends to be sort of chunky and it's hard to mix in with the developer to make it nice and creamy. So my hot tip for that is to use an electric mixer. I use one from Product Club and it will save your brushes if you mix with your brush and it will save your wrist if you try and mix with a whisk because you will have to sit there and mix forever. So definitely 
if you want to use blonde icing, I highly recommend a color mixer. So now I have Caitlyn in the shampoo bowl. I'm quickly going to um, wipe off the color around her hairline. I like to do this before I hit it with water and shampoo because when you do that, it lowers the pH and really sets in the color into their skin. So do it beforehand as much as you can before you hit it with shampoo. Here I'm just showing you how light we got with the Blonde Idol um, Blonde Icing Lightener with 30 volume and pH bonder. Blonde icing lifts up to seven levels. So if you're familiar with flash lift, it lifts up to eight. So, and that is our strongest lightener and blonde icing is our second strongest lightener. So yes, cream lighteners are very gentle, but that doesn't mean that they don't pack a punch. Also, if you have noticed, I went in between the highlights as well. I didn't get a shot of that, I'm sorry. But I used Redken Chromatics ultra rich in 7NA. It is also a permanent color, um, but it is a very, very gentle permanent color. It is oil-based and it has a very low pH. There's no ammonia in it, so I don't feel too guilty about putting it over the ends. Um, I know, you know, rule of thumb is semi-permanent colors only on the ends unless you're needing to lighten. But in this case, since she does kind of fade to that brassy color, I really kind of wanted to cancel out anything that was not highlighted. I'm using hair cleansing cream to shampoo out her color. Um, this is especially good for when you're using chromatic since it is oil based. Hair cleansing cream is the recommended shampoo to rinse out uh, chromatic's color. <laughs> So now is the time that we are actually going to put on our final color. Like I said in the beginning of the video, our final destination for the day is a medium brown. So I put those highlights in there thinking forward to how she is going to fade, um, getting past that brassy stage, but for today we actually want to be a medium brown. So now is the time where I'm going to actually put that color on. I'm going to use Redken Shades EQ with 2% processing solution and it is permissible to put it on um, damp hair at the bowl just make sure it is very 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 towel dried <laughs> you can see I dried it with a towel dried it some more wrung it out dried it some more and kept drying it some more <laughs> so uh, that is very important make sure it is very very towel dried and process it for the whole 20 minutes if you're going to do it in the bowl so here is our final color processed after 20 minutes and I'm just rinsing it out so you can see um, the final result. I'm going to shampoo again. Um, I know I've heard rumors saying that you know you don't need to shampoo out Shades EQ Gloss. Uh, it's still a hair color, it still uses you know hydrogen peroxide to develop it you still got to shampoo that stuff off so I'm using hair cleansing cream again um, also with hair cleansing cream it is color safe it is a clarifying shampoo but it is color safe so it is definitely safe to rinse out your colors with hair cleansing cream <laughs> might be asking yourselves, okay Shannon, I get your method and your thought process, but if you're concerned about her fading to a brassy color, why didn't you just like pack the pigment in so she wouldn't fade? And my answer to that is because we like to take Caitlyn much blonder in the spring and summer and I didn't want to be kicking myself in the rear a few months from now when Caitlyn tells me she wants to be blonde. 
So here's Caitlin's final color. I'm just going to do some loose waves with my Samvia Sleeker Iron. Um, I have it on the highest heat setting because she has some really super healthy hair and I really want it to last. So I need to use the high heat setting instead of the medium or low. And I'm just taking um, diagonal forward sectioning again. Like I said earlier, I really like to reflect the haircut in everything else that I do. So not only the color, but the styling as well. So my actual sections that I take are diagonal forward. I'm just kind of heating up the base so I don't get a crease and then doing a little half turn and leaving the ends out. If I accidentally curl the ends too much, then I just run over the ends with my flat iron like you can see me doing on some of these. Also, I am sure you noticed I am very zoomed in on a lot of my shots. That is because today was a regular working day in the salon and I wanted to be respectful of my coworkers and their clients as well. So that is why my shots are a little zoomed in. Hope you don't mind. I am finishing Caitlin off with some windblown. It is a very light hold texturizing hairspray from Redken, so I am just spraying that all over um, from roots to ends and giving it a nice tassel. So let's take a look back to Caitlin a couple hours ago to her before shots. And after these run through, I will go ahead and post pictures of her final color. If you guys have any questions on the products I used today, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and we'll chat later. Thanks guys. Bye. Welcome back. Me again. Did you guys make it all the way to the end of the video? If you did comment down below and let me know because that's a huge deal. And let's make this something sort of fun. How about every time at the end of the video, for those of you who stick around to watch me the whole entire time, I will reveal a little secret about myself. So today's secret will be, mm, I love olives. Any kind of olive, green olive, black olives. At Thanksgiving, my family, my cousin is the exact same way. My family used to have to put out extra bowls of olives just for us because we would eat them all. Mm -hmm. I hope you all enjoyed this sort of laid back format. I will see you in my next video and we'll chat later. Bye.